Welcome to Living the Smarter Science of Slim, where we provide a scientifically proven lifestyle for long-term health and fat loss by eating more and exercising less, but smarter. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hey everyone, this is Carrie Brown and Jonathan Baylor over at the Smarter Science of Slim HQ. (laughs) HQ, the world headquarters. Of the Smarter Science of Slim. (laughs) Yes. How are you, Jonathan? (laughs) I am, I'm good, Carrie, how are you doing? It's a very orange shirt you have on. Well, you know, um, while we're making fun of people, the... (laughs) Um, my dear Carrie, so we talked about buying food in bulk in a previous podcast and even mentioned how Carrie bought some ridiculous amount of, how much xylitol? 55 pounds. 55 pounds of xylitol. Yes, folks. So For you lovely readers so that I can yes. make you yummy stuff. Apparently she's going to be cooking nonstop for the next 20 years. So, so, so Carrie took the bulk advice, buying in bulk to save money. To, to heart. To heart. And she has also purchased... 50 pounds of <laughs> almond meal slash almond flour. That is true. So she, so when you start measuring the amount of food you are purchasing in hundreds of pounds, I, I think we might have to have an intervention. <laughs> Unless you start some sort of a bakery of sorts, but, but that is, I have that to, is quite epic. I have epic. to invent things and test things and... All of that good stuff. All that, it's like a little chemistry lab. I will not lab. give our listeners rubbish. <laughs> That, it sounds like almost Carrie's running for office. As Carrie Brown quoted, I will not give our listeners rubbish. No new rubbish. No new rubbish. No new rubbish. Wow. What are we talking about? We are going to talk about, we're going to start digging into the key principles of smarter exercise and, and the principles that enable us to exercise less but smarter. And the first principle we want to talk about is we want to exercise more muscle to get more results. Okay, you scared me for just a just a brief second there. Exercise more, and I was like, muscle. no. Yes. Uh, yep, yep, yep. But as soon as you said the word muscle, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's here's the cool thing. We're actually by the end of this podcast, you are going to understand the the. Well, we're going to simplify some otherwise complicated physiology that shows that in fact, and this is not debated. This is not controversial. This is physiological fact that the only way to work more muscle is to exercise less. And let me explain. We're going we're gonna to spend the rest of the podcast explaining how that can be true. But let me just say it again because it is a physiological fact that the only way to exercise the most muscle and specifically the most muscle fibers possible is to do less exercise. I love that. You love that. Okay, well, let us prove it physiologically now. So a couple things just to quickly start. So we all know we have different muscles in our body, right? we got like our biceps and our arms and our quadriceps and our legs and our gluteus maximus that cushions us when we sit down, which is actually the largest muscle in our body and is quite important to work in order to clear our hormonal clog. But most of us uh, may not know that we have individual little fibers that make up our muscles, okay. muscle fibers. And just like we have different muscles on our body to do different things, like we, you know, we've got our biceps to move our arms and we've got our quadriceps to move our legs, we have different fibers within our muscles that enable our muscles to do different things. Let me give you a specific example. So we have what's called type one muscle fibers. These muscle fibers allow our muscles to do a little bit of work for a very long period of time. So, for example, you'll notice how uh, we can, you know, you can walk around for a long time. Why is that? Well, you can walk around for a long time because you're using your type 1 muscle fibers to walk. They generate very little force and they can run for a long time, which makes sense, right? Like the less force something requires, the longer it can be done. But now we actually have three other types of muscle fibers. We have our type 2A muscle fibers, our type 2X muscle fibers, and then our type 2B muscle fibers. And kind of imagine that as a stack. So on the top of the stack, you have your type 1 muscle fibers. Then below that, you have type 2A. Below that, you have type 2X. And below that, you have type 2B. As we get down that stack, those muscle fibers allow us to produce progressively more force, but for a shorter period of time. So, you know, if, if, um, 
you know, you hear these, uh, well, that's a bad example. Let me do a different one. If, if, you know, if we just need to pick up something heavy, like we're moving and we need to pick up a heavy box, you can't pick up a lot of heavy boxes and you can't hold that box for a really long time. And in fact, when you do pick up that box, you're actually going to be using some different muscle fibers. You're going to be using your type two and potentially even your type two B muscle fibers in addition to your type one muscle fibers in order to pick up that box. Because the more force you need to generate, the more muscle fibers your body's gonna recruit, and it's actually gonna recruit different types of muscle fibers, the types of muscle fibers that will allow you to generate the amount of force you need to generate. If I'm ever in that situation, I normally just call somebody else's husband. <laughs> Carrie works the muscle fibers in her fingers to <laughs> dial her telephone. <laughs> Which is it works brilliantly for yeah, me. It, it, it works brilliantly. So yes, but now the key thing here, folks, is if you do not have that luxury, no, is um, so uh, a couple things to keep in mind here is so we all know that working more muscle is better than working less muscle, right? Like that's why people tell us to do things like ride a bike or run because using our big leg muscles is better for us than using like the little muscles in our hands, right? Like typing on a keyboard doesn't really do anything for your physical fitness because while you are using muscles, your hand, anything that makes your body move is because a muscle is moving, they're not big enough to do anything metabolically. So we all get and we all agree that the more muscle we exercise, the better results we get. But the key thing that's left out of most traditional uh, exercise conversations is the physiolog physiological fact that in addition to working just more muscle on our body, we can actually use more fibers within, our uh, within each of our individual muscles. So for example, if we pick a type of exercise that requires us to use a lot of force, here's what our body does. Our body first says, <clears throat> okay, type one muscle fibers, try to lift this. Our type one muscle fibers are like, okay, we're trying. And then our body's gonna say, well, crap, this thing isn't moving. So it's gonna say, type 2A muscle fibers, come on down. You're the next contestant on Lift This Box. Not as popular as The Price is Right, but still, I think in the UK, it's a pretty popular show on television. No TV. <laughs> no, it's no TV, okay. Clueless. <laughs> Hopefully our listeners will get how lame of a joke that actually was. Anyway, um, if the type 2A muscle fibers don't get the job done, our body recruits our next class of muscle fibers, our type 2X muscle fibers. If that's still not enough, it goes all the way down and recruits our type 2B muscle fibers. We've got all four types of muscle fibers and hopefully we lift that thing up. So now we're using all of our muscle fibers and here's the key thing. So we already said using more muscle is better than using less. So we know that exercises that require a lot of force will require us to use more muscle fibers and that's good. But here's the key thing, Carrie. These type 2 muscle fibers, basically the deeper down these muscle fibers are, so you know, type 2A, type 2X, type 2B getting progressively deeper, the deeper we get, the more metabolically beneficial exercising those muscle fibers are. Okay. So like for example, when we activate our type 2B muscle fibers, we cause this massive hormonal reaction in our body. Because when you think about it, right, the only way we – ever have to activate those muscle fibers is if we have to do something really intense, like pick up something really heavy. And our body sort of like sounds its emergency broadcast system. It's like, all hands on deck. Just like that. Hopefully that wasn't too loud on the audio. <laughs> I'm getting carried. This is the second week in a row where I've got her turning red. So it's like, like that. And it says all hands on deck. And because is happening, our body starts flipping out and it's like, oh my God, hormones, we gotta burn fat, we need a bunch of energy, it's like the sky is falling, ah! That is when meaningful change happens in our body. Now contrast that to like going for a little walk on the treadmill, right? Our body's like versus which is gonna, which is gonna cause more of a reaction in our body. The boop boop is going to cause that reaction, right? So, <laughs> so, so the key takeaway for me is I got to stop calling everybody else's husband. Yes, yes, you do, you do. The the, the point here is that I need to lift <laughs> my own heavy stuff. Yes, okay. yes, and in fact, now, but here's the but here's the beautiful thing, Carrie. So let's bring this all back to what we started with originally, where we said the only way to work more muscle is to work out less. 
Okay, remember that's how we kind of started the podcast with that fantastic claim. That was what you had me with less. With less, but now here's why that has to be true. Okay, the more muscle fibers we're using, the more energy we're using up, makes sense. In addition, we just talked about these deeper muscle fibers, they generate even more force. So they're gonna use even more energy. Now we have a fixed amount of energy in our body. Let's say, let's just do a simple mathematical abstraction. Let's say we have like 10 units of energy. If we do a traditional form of exercise that only works our type 1A muscle fibers, you know, maybe we use one unit of energy every 30 minutes. That's why we need to exercise for two hours. But if we're using all of our muscle fibers and those muscle fibers require even more energy. So it's like a one-two punch, right? More muscle fibers plus the muscle fibers are uniquely energetic, we use one unit of energy every 15 seconds. And therefore, we have to exercise less. We just run out of fuel quickly. Again, this is why you can't sprint as long as you can walk. When you're sprinting, you're activating all of your muscle fibers and your uniquely metabolically beneficial muscle fibers. Therefore, you just run out of energy faster. So we're not just exercising less that would be not helpful. We're exercising less, but smarter. We're exercising less because we're gonna put so much safe uh, stress, good stress on our muscles that it is physically impossible for, for us to exercise more. I have tried over the last however long I've known you to find a hole in this, and I can't. Well, I mean, Carrie, it's the good news is that there's... It just makes so much sense. It makes sense. And again, you have to say, well, like, why haven't we been told about this? Well, think about it, Carrie. I mean, I used to be a trainer. If, if we all knew that all we needed to do was like this very simple, short duration form of exercise For that we can do at home... 10 minutes at home <laughs> once a week. <laughs> I, I mean, I really wouldn't have that many clients, you know, to be clear. And, and it's not to say that like personal trainers or gyms are bad. I mean, if your goal is to be an elite athlete you absolutely need a gym and you absolutely need, you know, complex workout routines. But if your goal is just to be hot, <laughs> hot, or if your goal is to, you know, maintain fitness and, and have a, a, a wonderful uh, appearance and energy levels, it's actually really, really simple. And again, it's, it's again, it's not too good to be true. I mean, think a, a useful analogy is, um, uh, think of, uh, uh, like medicine, right? Like there's different qualities of medicine. There's baby aspirin and then there's Oxycontin. So a couple of reasons that analogy is useful. I like analogies is, um, no kidding, no kidding is, you know, you could take baby aspirin all day. It's never going to do what one Oxycontin or, you know, morphine will do. It's there. It's a different type of thing. The other thing to keep in mind is if you have something that's extremely high potency, you don't, and in fact, you shouldn't use a lot of it. So that's the other thing we want to keep in or mind. Or very often. Or, or very often. That's exactly right. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do, we're, we're basically prescribing the most effective and potent form of exercise in the world. And the cool thing is that it's actually incredibly safe. So we don't have to worry about hurting ourselves while we do it, but we are going to ache after we do it. Like we are going to be sore. And in fact, if we're not sore, that means we're not doing it right. Because if we were doing it right, we would be sore. So it's not this too good to be true gimmick. It's actually just pretty simple physiology. And in fact, it's a trade-off, right? Like we're going to be sore. It's not fun. Like if you can smile and talk to your friend while you're exercising smarter, you're not exercising smarter because it's too intense to do anything else other than focus on that exercise. Uh, but it only takes 10 minutes, so that's okay. I want to emphasize, this is not fun, people. <laughs> it's not fun. You're going to hate that 10 minutes. But you're going to love the other, I don't know, thousand but, minutes a week that you don't have to worry you're about. you're going to love it long term. But so let's, let's kind of summarize this a little bit, Carrie. And it's kind of funny because let's think about how we can kind of, once we understand the physiology of our muscle fibers and how, you know, Working more of them requires us to use more energy, so therefore we can exercise less. And in fact, when we work more of them, we even work more powerful versions of muscle fibers, which require even more energy and are even more metabolically beneficial. Let's talk about how that flips exercising 
on its head. And, and I don't mean to be redundant here, but as you said, like this is so counterintuitive, it bears repeating a little bit. So if we're focused on exercising more, like if that's our goal, okay, our goal is to exercise more. What are we going to do? What should be our strategy? Well, our strategy would be, let's pick an exercise that requires as little force as possible so that we use as few muscle fibers as possible and as weak muscle fibers as possible so that we can exercise as much as possible. Okay, but if we do that, we're going to exercise a few muscle fibers and relatively metabolically benign muscle fibers, and it'll take us many hours to use up our energy, and we're not going to cause a hormonal change in our body, so we're going to do a lot and get a little. Right. Now, let's look at our smarter approach. Our smarter approach is to focus on exercising less, but smarter to focus on the quality of exercise. How do we do that? We want to pick exercises that require a lot of force but are very safe so that we fire as many muscle fibers as possible as well as our uniquely metabolically beneficial type 2 muscle fibers. We do that. We exercise a lot of muscle fibers and uniquely metabolically beneficial muscle fibers. We use up our energy in a few minutes. And what have we done, Carrie? We've done a little and gotten a lot. Right. And it's awesome. I'll take that. I mean, it stinks while you're doing it, but... It does stink while you're doing it. It's, I think it's worth the trade-off. You can do something that stinks for 10 minutes. Absolutely. Once a week. I Absolutely. mean, you really can. That's how I look at it is that, you know, I'm going to hate this 10 minutes, but it's 10 minutes. You can put up with anything for that amount of time. Yep, yep. And we, I know folks are going to be, like, we have a few more principles we want to run through here, but people might be craving, like, what the heck kind of exercise are you talking about? We're going to talk, it's called eccentric training, and we're going to talk about smarter interval, interval training uh, in a moment when, when we get into this, but to just quickly for yourself test what we're talking about, um, it's as simple as doing something like uh, squat down uh, till your legs are about parallel with the ground. If you can do this safely, if you need to hold on to something for balance, that's fine. And then just try to hold that bottom position. And if that's too easy, I don't hold something heavy or put a backpack on your back. I mean, this is not your exercise routine. We'll have something more formal for you or hold a dumbbell. But the point is like sit like you're going to sit down on a chair, but don't actually sit on the chair and just hold that position. Like within a matter of seconds, you're going to feel something that you would never feel even if you walked for three hours. Right. And in fact, if you try to hold that position for three minutes, you won't be able to. Like your muscles will fatigue. Like to be clear, you will do more to your muscles in less than three minutes than you would in three hours of continuous walking. And and your your body will actually fail. Yeah, and, you're, and you'll you be will like, not be able with all your effort. You will not be able to hold it. Yep, and and. When we, let's talk about safety. I mean, even walking, which is brilliant for us. I mean, you're out walking, you know, you could roll your ankle, you could trip, you could, all you're doing here is like squatting down and holding it. You're not even moving. Like that is the safest. That's what we talk about. Like you don't need to increase the risk of injury while increasing force at all. In fact, you can reduce the risk of injury when you follow the smarter techniques we're going to talk about here. Because again, that's, there's really no movement involved in, in what we just talked about. That's pretty darn safe. I was walking down the corridor today and now I have a big old lump on my leg. <laughs> and I was just walking. <laughs> I, I slipped over. <laughs> yeah, that's the... What? Walking, you, slipped you, over. With a bunch of coffee big in your hand, Big old bruise correct? now. With coffee in your yes, hand? Yes, I've never bruised myself doing your exercises. There, so there, Okay, the takeaway is... It is riskier to carry coffee around the office than it is to exercise smarter. That has been my experience. <laughs> that has yes. Been your experience. Yes, you will never pour hot liquid on yourself while tumbling to the ground. The other bonus <laughs> is that you don't get a designer stain down your left leg all day long either. Yes, that is um, certainly something that we will avoid while we exercise smarter. So as Carrie mentioned, the other aspect, so that, that's for a short period of time. We, again, we just showed how you have to exercise less in order to work more muscle fibers because the only way to work more muscle fibers is to use more energy. And if you use more energy, you've got to exercise less. Makes sense. In addition to that, you also will have to exercise less frequently. The reason for this 
is the deeper a muscle fiber is, so like, again, type 2B versus type 1, type 2B is our deepest, type 1 is our, our shallowest, quote unquote, the longer they take to recover. So, you know, when you're sore, your muscles are repairing themselves. The more force a muscle fiber generates, the longer it takes to recover. So while, you know, we could walk for one hour on Monday and one hour on Tuesday and one hour on Wednesday and blah, 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 blah. When we do a smarter workout on Monday, on Tuesday, it's gonna be hard for us to walk down the stairs. Like we're gonna be very, very, very sore. And on Wednesday, we're gonna be sore. And on Thursday, we're gonna be sore. And the reason for that is, remember, we are working muscle fibers, which we potentially have never worked in our entire lives, potentially. Especially if you call someone else's husband every time you need something heavy Especially moved. Especially if you call someone else's husband. And these muscle fibers require more time to heal. So we're gonna be sore longer. And if your muscles are still healing, not only is there no point in exercising them more, but you're not, we're not able to. Like for example, if, if we do a smarter exercise routine or what we think is a smarter exercise routine, which of course we'll cover in future podcasts, we're all here for the long run, folks. We can't give it to you all in one podcast. You gotta get the little bite-sized chunks. <laughs> is um, You won't be able to do that same exercise again the next day and if you can, that means you didn't work your deeper muscle fibers. Because if you did, you they just wouldn't, like it's again, it's a physiological law that our type 2B muscle fibers, when they are in fact activated, take between three to in some cases 21 days to fully recover. So I, I um, you remember that, I don't know if you remember, it was a while back where, where we were hanging out and you were showing me technique or you were trying and you'd done, you do your workout on a Saturday. Yes, generally. And this Saturdays. was on a Monday and you came over and I was saying, am I doing this right? And you literally couldn't show me how to do it because yep. you were so sore still from the Saturday. And that was just like oh, yeah. amazing to me Yeah, that Jonathan actually couldn't do it you know, you could kind of do it, but not really because yeah. he was still so sore from Saturday's 10-minute workout. And, and that's the key here, folks, is it's not, again, this isn't some like, just exercise less magic. Remember, we're talking about trading quantity for quality. That's key. It's not just exercise less. It's exercise less, but smarter so that we're working these muscle fibers, which require us to exercise for a short period of time and require us to exercise infrequently. Again, not because we're lazy, but because if we're doing these exercises properly, as Carrie mentioned, it will be physically impossible for, for us to do them frequently. We just can't do it. Yay. Yay. What a great thing that is. Cool, so let's let's actually talk a bit about how we do these types of exercise exercises most safely. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to work our muscle fibers intensely. I mean, the most common example, example I give is, is sprinting. But what we want to avoid is we want to, in, we want to increase the quality of our exercise while not increasing the risk. I mean, you can increase the, the number of muscle fibers you work by moving faster. But if you move faster, such as these sort of explosive plyometric type extreme workouts we see, you're probably gonna get hurt yourself. Another way to do it is to move much more resistance, but very slowly and in a very controlled fashion. If you've ever been to a yoga class, you can actually see people, you know, they get in a pose, they hold it, it's extremely taxing, and, and people are, it's a great workout in certain cases, but you know, you're moving very slowly, you're moving very deliberately, you're moving very safely. So our goal here is to maximize the amount of force we require our muscles to generate while simultaneously minimizing risk of injury. Now, if that's our goal, research has shown that there's a, a two very specific ways to do that, and we'll cover the first one uh, today, and we'll cover the next one in the next podcast. The first one is known as eccentric training. Now, uh, quick definitions here. Anytime we do an exercise, there's two components to that. So like imagine you're doing a bicep curl and maybe even do this while you're listening so that it makes sense to you. If your arm is extended to your side, when you curl your arm up and your bicep contracts, that's called the concentric portion of the movement, movement. And when you let your arm down and the muscle extends, that's called the eccentric portion of the movement. Now the reason that distinction is important is because your muscles are up to 40% stronger 
eccentrically than they are concentrically. Or it's easier to lower weight than it is to lift weight because our muscles are literally stronger on the way down. Got it. And if you want to test this, there's an easy way to do this and there's a more precise way to do this. The easy way to do it is to walk up a flight of stairs and note how you feel and then walk down the flight of stairs and note how you feel. The trip down is easier because yes. your muscles are literally stronger on the way down. That's also why it's easier to sit down than it is to stand up. Your muscles are literally stronger on the way down. Now, of course, gravity matters in those examples. And if you have access to a gym, you can test this principle without gravity and you'll still see that it's true by getting on like a row machine or a chest press machine and picking an exercise or picking a resistance that you, um, that you can't lift with one arm, but you can lift with two arms and take that weight, lift it with two arms. Again, you couldn't lift it with one arm and then take one hand away and watch as one of your arms can, can lower that weight. It right. couldn't lift the weight, but it can lower it because again, it's literally 40% stronger eccentrically than it is concentrically. One way to think about this is kind of like we have a, a dominant hand and a non-dominant hand. Like you can technically write with either one of your hands, but one hand is much better at it than the other. You can contract your muscle concentric, concentrically and eccentrically, it's just stronger eccentrically. So we wanna focus on eccentric contractions for two reasons. One, if, it's, if we're stronger eccentrically, that means we can use more resistance, which means we can recruit more muscle fibers. But in addition, a lot of times when people get injured exercising, they get injured during the transition of the movement. So a, a simple example of this, don't actually do this because I'm gonna describe how to hurt yourself, so don't, do not do this, is if you were to squat down and then bounce back up, when you get to the bottom and bounce up, like that transition from down to up, that transition puts an amazing amount of stress on your joints and so forth. When we focus on just eccentric or lowering movements, we don't do that, we don't have that risk. So we can just slowly lower down and that's the end of the movement. There's no transition point. So it's also safer, which is cool. Got it. And we'll talk about how to actually do that by yourself and in the comfort of your home in a moment. But the general gist is that we're going to find ways to take existing resistance training exercises, like at home, things like body weight squats, and, and, and pull-ups and push-ups and, and like lifting things over our heads and kind of a shoulder press movement or if we belong to a gym, things like leg press, shoulder press, rows, uh, uh, chest, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, chest press. And we're gonna figure out ways that we can lower more resistance uh, than we're raising and doing that incredibly slowly and incredibly safely so that we generate the most force, working the most muscle fibers, working our very unique muscle fibers, and therefore getting a better result in less time. And we'll specifically walk through how to do that in future podcasts, but as you can imagine, describing how to do an exercise using only audio is, is, is kind of a challenge. So, you know, we'll put pictures up and there's videos up on the Smarter Science of Slim website to help with these things. But the general gist is, if you can move more slowly, and if you can really focus on the lowering movement rather than just lifting movements. I mean, ironically, when you go to the gym, you'll see there's a bunch of guys who are just, you know, like they lift the weight and then they drop it. And then they lift the weight and then they drop it. Little do those guys know they're really doing a disservice to themselves because it's that lowering portion where they could really get the most benefit and minimize risk. So let's just focus on very slowly lowering as much resistance as possible really for any exercise. We don't need new exercises to do this. There's creative ways to use existing exercises to do this and we'll cover that. But the point is lowering weights is a great way to lower your weight. Awesome. Boom. Love it. Love it. So next week, Carrie, let's talk a little bit more about how we can specifically do eccentric exercise. Let's talk about some examples Maybe let's talk about how we can do it at home. And then we'll talk about how we can make what's traditionally thought of as cardiovascular exercise smarter by doing it with more resistance and also in a safer fashion. So again, we work more muscle fibers and get more results in less time. How's that sound? That sounds great.
I love it. Well, folks, thanks for tuning in. Until next week, remember to eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. If you like the podcast and if there's other ways we can help you, please join us in the Smarter Science of Slim support group, which is freely available at the Smarter Science of Slim website, smarterscienceofslim.com. There you'll find all kinds of free recipes and success stories and just all kinds of fun stuff like how to help your kids go sane and just great community content. And just one last thing before you go, if you wouldn't mind heading over to iTunes and up onto Amazon.com and leaving us a review and then going over to Facebook and liking us, we would hugely appreciate it. 